what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? I want to share a story that I read today by Ryan Douglas, who wrote a piece for Atlanta Black Star entitled, Why Are Millennials Leaving the Black Church? Check it out. The black church has long stood at the center of black communities as a place of worship and social advocacy. The civil rights movement saw religious leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, and Joseph Lowry on the front lines of marches, preaching, and pushing policy reform while strengthening community morale through faith and fellowship. The front lines of modern racial justice movements find black people less likely to religiously affiliate or emphasize a role for the church in activism. Although still the backbone of the community support, the church is not serving black youth like it used to. According to a study by the Pew Research Center, 19% of blacks under age 30 are unaffiliated with a religion compared to just 7% of blacks age 65 and older. The statistic represents a growing divide between young people and Christianity and raises concerns about its importance in the future of black liberation. It goes on to say some other things, but that's the gist of it. Now, what are some of the reasons you think that millennials are leaving the church? Uh, we're talking about the black church, but overall, what are some of the reasons the young people are turning away from church? I can tell you that I think one of the biggest reasons that they're turning away from church is the hypocrisy. Young people are doing their research. They're asking questions. See, we didn't ask questions in my day, in my youthful days. Well, my younger days, I'm still young. But we didn't ask questions. We were indoctrinated and whatever we were told to believe, we believed and we went on about our business. The young people are asking questions and they have the internet. So they're not boxed in like we used to be where we, you walk into the house and there's one television or two televisions or whatever and all the information is either, you're getting your, all your information either from home or you're getting it from school and maybe if you're in the streets, you get it from the streets. These kids got the internet, they're cross-referencing, they're sharing information and they're just not going for it. And I tell you another thing is there's a lack of spiritual authenticity about adults. Young people see the the double standards that you know it's old saying do as i say not as i do that's a problem if you out there living a foul life and you're trying to tell me to do something different to do it the right way i can see if you maybe if you did it in the past and you got your life straightened out and you're trying to pass game on but if you're still living that life and you're trying to tell me to not live that life something is wrong with that People see also that breakdown of the family unit. It's so many people in church that are divorced. Church is supposed to be that place that, hey, man, you know, it's supposed to be fellowship, community. You know, it should be some advantages to going to church that I can't get off the streets. I need to be able to look at church and say, you know what? I want that life. I want that. There should be a difference between the way church people live, the average, I'll say at least the average church person live, and the person who is of the world is living, right? There needs to be something different that you can offer me. See, if I felt like that if I went to church, it would make me a more honest person, a loyal person, if I looked at church and I said, damn, man, everybody in church seem to have it together. You know, these, these families are together. The, the family unit is cohesive. The divorce rate is real low in the church. 
you know, that that's an attribute. That's something to look at and say, man, I, that's something to aspire to be. Okay, I want that, right? Because everybody want to be in relationships where they feel that their mate is loyal. They feel that they can have a long-term commitment. Nobody, well, I won't say nobody, but most people don't get married to get a divorce. Most people marry a person that they love and they, they want to spend the rest of their life with. And then at some point, things just don't work out all the time like they're supposed to. So, you know, I get all of that. But that should be something that aspire a person to say, you know what, I want to go to church because that's a different life. And that's not happening. People are looking at the people in church doing everything that everybody else is doing. And they're saying, man, I don't have to go to church to do that. You know? If, if my life is not going to be any different, if, if all of these people in the church is doing the same thing that the people in the streets are doing, what am I going to church for? What am I wasting my time talking about getting my soul saved? Man, y'all seen how corrupt a lot of these churches are. People, in fact, a lot of people go to church to get their soul lost. Look at all these pedophiles in church. That's a big problem. People are looking at the, the pedophiles, all of the rape that's going on in the church. Uh, in many cases, the pastors are doing it. The priests are raping people raping kids, raping teenagers. So the young people like, man, I ain't buying it. I don't believe it. I'm not attracted to that. Another huge element is that back in the day is like the author said, Ryan Douglas said, back in the day, that was a political component. That was a fellowship component to a community component to church that no longer exist. Many of these churches are mega churches and people are coming way from across town to come to church. And they never even see the, the other church members. They're just going to that destination. It's like a, a destination and, and uh, they're just going to do whatever they got to do in it. They're not fellowshipping anymore, they're networking. So that's a huge contributor. People are looking at, I think, how these pastors, many of these pastors are living the lifestyle while they have so much in abundance and many of their members have little or nothing. Many of their members struggle to pay their bills, to pay basic bills, utilities. Even their cell phone bill, and you know you got to pay that cell phone bill first these days. <laughs> but they're looking at that, and the youngsters are saying, no, nah, I'll pass. The pervasive cultural abandonment of morality is what we got to look at. That's a big thing. A lot of these gun nuts are in the church. They swear by God, but they want to kill something. Many of these people who say that people are redeemable, that's redemption in everybody. God forgives, right? But they are advocates for the death penalty. Y'all help me understand this. They like to preach about living like God. People like to say, well, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus really execute people because they committed a crime? Whatever crime, would he really execute people? And would he, let's, for, for sake of argument, for some people say, well, my God is a vengeance God, vengeful God. Let's say he did execute some people, right? But, would he execute innocent people, people that he knows is innocent? Would he uh, plant drugs on people? Many of these cops who plant drugs on people are Christians. They're in the church, they're religious, but they're planting drugs on people. 
innocent people, ruining people's lives. They're gunning people down. Many of these prosecutors and judges go to church, walk into that church on Sunday, bold as day, with that Bible in their hand. And they can recite that scripture word for word. And they'll railroad a person that they know is innocent and ruin their lives, take them away from their families. They're heartless, they're evil. And the youngsters see that. The, many of the youngsters see it and they're saying, nope, uh, I'll take my chances by myself. <laughs> If I'm going to be blind, I'll be blind all by myself. Won't be a situation where you have the blind leading the blind. There's no great mystery why young people are abandoning the church. Studying the behavior of religious people is the best way to lose your faith in religion. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.